I'm sure you're all very familiar with the most successful YouTuber on planet Earth, Alex Becker. Not only is he the most successful YouTuber, but he's also the most woke, most successful billionaire advice guru on the internet who happens to have very PG and family friendly content. And uh, let's see, am I missing anything here? Oh, <laughs> he's got a great bot as well. Now, in all seriousness, Alex Becker has some really good content when it comes to business and just general life advice. But why am I talking about him on this channel today? Well, because adding to the whole laundry list of things that he's the best at, he's now the fastest learning and best game developer on the planet. That's right, Alex Becker is now making video games. And in fact, take a look at this one that he just made. It's a clone of the game Doom Eternal. And I think it looks really freaking cool. And not only that, he made this game in about three weeks time and he's only been coding for in about a month and a half now. And honestly, just watching some of the gameplay footage of this game, it looks like a really fast paced, fun to play game. And it certainly looks a lot better than the Doom clone that I made a little over a year ago. Although that was more for a tutorial video that I made where I basically show you how to make a full game from start to finish. Uh, you can go check it out in the card up above if you do want to watch that video and learn how to make that game yourself. Anyways, I do just wanna make this little video talking about you know how Alex Becker made this game so quickly and how he learned coding as fast as he did so he recently put out a video basically explaining his whole process of you know how he went from no coding and game development experience at all to making you know a really cool and fun looking game in just a matter of weeks and i don't want to make this video to discourage anyone because you know i know a lot of us have maybe been making games longer than just a couple weeks and sometimes a lot of times actually we feel like our games aren't really that good enough or fun to play and so i think alex brought up a lot of really good points that can apply to people you know even for people who watch my channel who have been developing games for you know much longer than a couple weeks so anyways with some of these tips i do hope that you can remember how fun game development can be and you can really use this as inspiration to you know get back working hard on your projects and actually finish them and you know bring them to a release if that's what you want to do with them so alex attributes the number one thing to his success and being able to make a game you know this quickly from pretty much no experience at all is just keeping up your momentum and what he meant by this is not just do like you know the boring coding work of you know just kind of like learning algorithms all day and stuff that's just really not that fun and interesting but keep the momentum up of you doing fun, cool things in your game. And of course, if you have no coding experience whatsoever, you are gonna need to do a little bit of that to kind of like figure out you know, what variables and classes are. But once you kind of understand the basics of kind of like how to read and structure code, then you want to start getting into you know actually following tutorials for types of games that you might want to make and so for me the key takeaway here is to get over the boring stuff as soon as possible and then jump into some of the more interesting and exciting things even if it is a little bit more complicated than you are you know comfortable with at that time you know that's exactly where you want to be you want to be you know kind of learning things that are a little bit out of kind of your reach because when you start actually doing those and implementing them you're gonna to start to learn and pick up on how those different things work. And as you do this more and more, you're gonna get a fundamental understanding of how the types of games that you wanna create really work at a core base level. And then when you wanna start adding more complex things that maybe the tutorial that you were following didn't necessarily go over, then you're so intimately familiar with the game that you made on a core base level that you can go out and look for more of those you know, complex and cool features to add to your game and then you can kind of figure out how those work. And because again, you know your game so well, you can easily implement those features on top of your game. And so just looking at some of the gameplay footage from Alex's game that he made, you can see kind of a lot of inspiration that he took from you know, not only Doom, but other games like Overwatch. And again, because he knew the core base systems of his game so well, you know, he could go out and find, you know, maybe little tutorials or articles or snippets of code here and there for little things that he might want to add into his game. And even if it wasn't a, you know, perfect one size fits all solution that he could drop right into his game, he could basically take that kind of general concept and apply it to his game. And so that kind of leads into some more kind of general advice for programming and that programming isn't necessarily about, you know, writing the code. It's really more about problem solving. So even if you have some of these big complex problems or maybe some of these crazy features that you wanna add into your game, you can always break these problems down into you know, smaller and smaller parts until you know, one giant system has just you know, a couple moving components and then you look at one of those individual moving components, you break that down even further until you get to the point where you can write one single line of code. 
Once you have that, then you can move along, write another line of code and another until you have that component. Now you can do this multiple times for all the components that you need to create your full system. And then you have, you know, this fully working system, you know, this massive problem isn't really so scary. We can, when you can just break it down into its simplest pieces where you can write one single line at a time. And again, this kind of brings us back to momentum and just repetition and just continually working on your game because you know, the more that you solve these problems, the more you're going to recognize these problems. And even if something isn't, you know, exactly the same as before, you can kind of learn from, you know, your past problem solvings and you can start to recognize different solutions. Now, again, you're not always going to have the best and most optimal solution, especially if you're kind of starting out with game development, but that's okay. You know, that's how you learn. You learn different ways to do things. And the more you do this, the more you solve problems, the more you get obsessed with programming, you know, the faster and faster you're going to learn. And then before you know it, you're going to look back at code you wrote two weeks ago and you're going to say, you know, what the heck was I doing back then? You know, I know so much now, but it is a continual learning battle. And I do think that you really need to be obsessed with something if you want to, you know, really become successful at it. You know, that's one of the things that Alex was talking about is how he, he was just having a ton of fun just making this cool looking game and adding all these, you know, awesome features into it. And that he didn't really want to like watch TV or slack off or whatever. He just wanted to work on his game in his free time. And I definitely feel the same way. You know, last week I had pretty much the whole weekend free and I was working on my game project and time just like completely vaporized. You know, I was just able to just program and develop, you know, all day long for a couple of days straight. And it was just fantastic. I had so much fun and it really makes me want to just work harder till I get to that point where I can program more and more just being able to have that freedom to do that. So just remember programming games is just completely fun. At the end of the day, that's exactly what it is. That's why we make games is because they're fun. And you know, it just happens that developing games is extremely fun as well. So remember, just keep up that momentum, make sure that you're programming and developing games as much as you can, as often as you can. And hey, maybe one day you too will make a game as good as Alex Becker can. Anyways, that's just about all I have for today's video. If you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about video game development. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.